A survey of more than 14,000 young people in Ireland has found that almost one in three of them have experienced mental health distress. The study was commissioned by Headstrong, the Centre for Youth Mental Health, and found that self-harm and suicide attempts were higher for those who didn't talk about their problems. They're helping me get through my bad days with their music, and I wanted to do that for myself and other people. I look to art a lot of the time for this. Um, I find yoga is extremely helpful for me. When I dance, I feel like myself compared to like everyday life when I'm doing normal things. But when I'm dancing, like I feel like I'm me. But there are genuine things that I struggle with all the time. And I think having music there is a great therapy for me. When I realized I was depressed, it was, it was a, weird, a weird kind of time. I'm not positive at all. <laughs> so just a little video to share that today was a very bad day and just like it was yesterday and the day before. Just throws me so much. Like I'm just so tired by everything. Hi, my name's Hannah and I'm 21 and my passion is music. I think probably what's made me passionate about music and singing is, you know, being brought up in quite a musical family. Like, I live with my granny and she's, she always minded me as a child and she came from a really musical family and always encouraged like singing and you know dancing and then eventually I started getting piano lessons as well and that really just kind of instilled a love for music in me and I haven't really stopped since like my mum always said I came out of the womb with jazz hands because I just never stopped performing like from the day I was born. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lily Rose, um, I'm 19 years old and my passions are art history, sculpting and painting. I've been surrounded with art my whole life. I was brought up with um, a painting set than plastic toys and that kind of set me on the track of art. My name is Heather, I'm 19 and I'm a dancer. So I started dancing because my cousin Rebecca was in a dance school in Neekslip and I've always danced like in my kitchen to High School Musical. That was like when I started to love it because um, I just loved watching them all dance in like the movies and stuff and it was so interesting to me. So I always got like a cheerleader outfit from High School Musical for Christmas and I used to dance in my sitting room all the time. So I joined the dance school, it's called Dance LA Dempsey, when I was seven. And I've been dancing ever since I was seven. Hi, my name's Chloe Fenley. I'm 18 years old and I'm passionate about music. I always loved music. I only started singing when I was like 12, but um, music motivated me. It made me happy. Um, it helped really, well, yeah, helped me heal. I, um, I listened to Demi Lovato a lot. And when I heard her music, I related to a lot of her songs and I was like wow and then I'd listen to her talking about mental health and stuff and that got me into that wanting to like I was like you can talk about it so can I so that's what I do why do they all leave me am I doing something wrong I try to always be happy but I'm not that strong Can anybody hear me crying? Can anybody see me trying? Cause I don't wanna fight this war
My name is Reedley McCarty, I'm 20 years of age and I'm most passionate about art, especially the fine art aspect of it. I got most passionate about art because of my mom. Uh, she was the first one to give me pencils and contribute to it, inspire me. Uh, a lot of art in my house growing up, in the kitchen to the sit room we had paintings that she had bought over time. She uh, used to read me Andy Warhol books when I was a baby and says that's a lot of the reason why I ended up picking up paintbrushes and considering art. But as I got on, grew up and uh, life went on, it became my output for when I was in school. Uh, it was the only thing that really, you know, kept kept me focused during the whole like troublesome years of being a teenager and somewhat being an outcast. And if I did like didn't have art, it'd just be I would have been lost. So. I think that all plays into one and just morphs itself together and just became the passion that it is today. I was depressed. It was it was a weird, weird kind of time. Uh, there wasn't much conversation going on in my life. I was just in, entered sixth year. I had fell out with friends that I was always really close with, and there was depression, you could say, before then. But really, when I started to cement in my life, was that period of time, and it became mixed in with angst, almost, and. The deterioration of the angst and the depression mixing t together, I found myself sitting in my room painting, uh, doing these paintings, doing what I was focusing on my NCAD portfolio uh, at the time, my art portfolio. I realised I wanted to do art at a younger age, but it was more so the design aspect instead of ta talking and kind of going through my emotions of the time. Uh, like I originally wanted to do architecture, I was always interested in Lego and stuff like that, but as, as life kind of carried on and stuff happened, art became an output, it became that, you know, release. When I was about 14, I was suffering really bad with anxiety and depression and I wouldn't go outside. And I isolated myself from all of my friends and family. I felt like a burden. I didn't like bothering other people with my problems. Um, I was more of a helper. I wanted to help everyone else, but I never helped myself. A bad day for me, well, I never have one bad day. They normally last for a few days, but they'll start off with me not wanting to go outside again. Like back about three or four years ago now, and back to that same girl. And that scares me sometimes. Um, so I don't open the blinds. The room's a mess after a few days. Um, I'm fighting with my like my mom, my friends. I won't go outside. Um, I'm just isolated again and I'm lonely and then I have a fear of people leaving so that makes it ten times worse for me and then like school I won't go to school it gets like that, if it's really bad I won't go to school I don't like facing big groups of people when I'm you know not myself I struggle with my mental health on a daily basis <laughs> um, I was diagnosed with depression, anxiety um, OCD and ARFID, which is Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. You're probably like, oh my God, this girl, what else can she have? Like how many letters does she want to throw in there? But they are genuine things that I struggle with all the time. And I think having music there is a great therapy for me. And it just allows me to kind of take a break and like there's nothing like sitting down at the piano and just playing something that it just switches your mind off. And it's, it's just a really nice thing to have. So I didn't have my antidepressants for like three days this week. Um, I completely forgot I'd run out of them and it was only by Saturday that I realised and the chemist was closed then. So I got them again on Monday, but it just throws me so much. Like I'm just so tired by everything. Obviously I have to get up out of bed to teach at the moment. I just couldn't do it. Like. I literally got up with 10 minutes to spare for my classes 
you know, um, just wasn't focusing. As soon as I finished teaching, straight back to bed, just cannot function. And like, I'm proud of myself for being able to, oh, that sounds so stupid, but you know, like I am proud of myself for being able to get up, put makeup on and just keep going. But it is really draining when you have to keep yourself in good form, communicating with other people and trying to keep going and with other people like relying on you for stuff it's, it's difficult so what made me fall in love with dance is just the way i can express myself when i'm dancing because i feel like a lot of people don't understand me and my dancing when i dance i feel like myself compared to like everyday life when i'm doing normal things but when i'm dancing like i feel like i'm me so the reason why i use my instagram platform to talk about body image and why I choose to like make it a big a big deal on my Instagram is just because of my own struggles through body image and I can speak for majority of girls that I know in my life who don't even speak about it because they don't have the confidence but for me it's like I'm like I'm a dancer like I use my body to move I use my body to express myself so like how am I going to do that if I don't love my body so I feel like I I need to, like my body's my instrument, right? And like, if you have an instrument, you're not gonna take care of it, it's not gonna work properly. So for me, like, I've seen my friends, especially in school, it was so toxic, like, you know, people talking about their, their weight or like their food, they're not eating or whatever. And like, for me, I don't look like those girls that were tiny and they were still like, oh my God, I need to lose all this weight. So I feel like from being in that atmosphere, it kind of made me look at myself and I was like, oh, I don't look like that. Or like, I don't eat the way they're eating. And as well, like I started the gym when I was 16 and I absolutely loved it. I loved it. Like it was my ex like, escape like, as well as dance. Like I loved it so much. And um, <clears throat> I started to like eat an awful lot and I was training so hard, lifting loads of weights. And I ended up putting on loads of weight, but it was like muscle. And then I kind of, I loved training that way, but then my results weren't kind of what I wanted when I was putting on all this weight. I was kind of looking around and I was like, oh, these girls on Instagram don't have these big legs like me, or they don't have like big shoulders like me. And I was kind of like, oh, like, do I really want to look like this? Even though I loved the training and I loved how hard I was working, I loved open weight every time I went to the gym, like, it was so exciting for me. And then I'd leave and I'd come home and I'd be like, oh, maybe I should stop doing this even though I loved it, like that's so toxic. And then I kind of stand back and I look at myself and I'm like, why am I chasing my own tail? Like I love what I'm doing, but I don't like the results I'm getting even though I'm working for the results. So from there, I was kind of like, why do I feel this way? And then I kind of looked around me and I was looking at all the people I follow on Instagram and I was like, is this helping me? Like these people are fake and they're paid to look this way and they're paid to eat the way they're eating and people are making their meals for them. Like it's not, it's not like A, B and C for people like us who are out here like training the way we want to train or like just day to day life. Like you can't do that, you know? So I think what happened really was I, I knew myself something wasn't right. And my family obviously started to kind of notice that I wasn't able to keep food down. And, you know, I'd gone to the doctors and they were like, you must be bulimic. I was like, that's not the problem. I ended up having some stomach issues, but that's all resolved now anyway. But I just felt like no one believed me and that even if I went for help, there was just nothing anyone could do. Um, and I think in a two week period, I went into hospital five times into A&E being like, please help me. I can't eat, I can't do anything. And they'd be like, you're fine. You're just overreacting. And I was like, I'm not. Like, there is something wrong here. I even remember when I was in sixth year in school, like, I was really stressed about the Leaving Cert and I was just so down in myself. And it was, it was the worst I had felt up until that point. You know, I was just really, like, on a low and I got the courage to go to my doctor anyway, and or my GP, and I'd never been to this one before, but I went in anyway, and I explained my situation and, you know, that I thought that, you know, some of my traumas and things like that were affecting me and that I was depressed or anxious or something, that something wasn't right. And she told me to take a week off school and go to see the lights in Dublin Zoo and I'd be fine. Um, and that just made me think like, oh my God, I really am on my own here. And then it was only when, you know, that would have been 2018. 
and then 2019 I ended up in hospital like kind of with just an extension of what I was feeling then and I I just feel like if that had been sorted out then I don't think I would have been as bad as I was and ending up in hospital or anything like that I think I really could have you know gotten more help and been seen and heard and been able to have like support there but I just felt at that time there was none. So just a little video to share that today was a very bad day and just like it was yesterday and the day before because of all this Covid stuff and my Zoom classes for college and I haven't been doing a lot of work the last three weeks since being on Zoom. Obviously as you can probably tell it's very difficult to dance from your sitting room five days a week and be motivated while being used to being in a studio. I literally woke up today and I was like no I'm not doing it. I lay in bed, done all my classes in bed, didn't dance once today, didn't even do my cardio classes. So I kind of just got up and I decided I'm going to do a few stretches instead of sitting around like eating crap, which I've been doing the last three weeks. I am so bloated and I feel like shit. I haven't worn anything other than leggings and pyjamas in the last three weeks because why would I? So yeah, but I'm just going to try and focus on tomorrow. I have a busy day tomorrow. I'm going to try and get to bed early and get up and just do tomorrow the best that I can. My worst day. The worst day I've had, I wrote um, a suicide letter and planned my suicide and I've done that a total of seven times since I was 12 and um, there's something that hold, hold, like holds me back and tells me no, you're not dying and like I think of people that need me and um, I know that I'd hurt a lot of people if I did go through with it. I don't want to do that. I know that I have a purpose and that took years to convince myself that, that I matter and that I'm needed and wanted and loved. I talk about slitting my veins in my wrist and um, overdosing. And there have been times where I was so close to overdosing or slitting my wrist but it was always the tablets that I grabbed when I was like, no, I'm doing it. And I would take some and then I'd like, there'd be something saying no. I completely fell out of love with life. I didn't see like any reason to be here anymore. I didn't want to be. Everything was dark, really dark. Um, I was getting help. But I didn't want the help, so I wasn't getting the help. People were like, everyone was trying to help me, but I wouldn't let them. Like I was really convinced that um, I wasn't worthy, worthy of help. I was like, no, there's no one can fix me. I'm not fixable. I said this is it. Like I was like, I'll be happier if I'm dead. And that makes me really upset. I'm not positive at all. And I know no one wants to hear that because, you know, mental health is what I talk about but, and like the positive sides, but... <sighs> it's so hard to pretend that everything's okay when it's not. It's so hard to put on that fake smile. It all kind of... I just remember like, even from the age of seven, just feeling really down and just feeling really different. Like there was a lot going on in my family when I was growing up and I, um, my dad was an alcoholic for my whole childhood. And I think I just, I carried a lot of that with me and I felt like it was normal to feel the way I did. I just wasn't happy. I could be happy, but I felt myself that I wasn't happy. And I think I was just really drained all the time. And it was only last summer, so summer 2019, that things got really bad and I actually ended up in hospital because I couldn't keep food down. And I was just getting so stressed and so anxious. I was losing weight, like it was ridiculous. And I finally got hospitalized and eventually they, you know, they helped me to overcome things and it has been a really slow process, 
but you know I am starting to feel better for it and obviously you know I have medication and things like that that help me but it's never enough to just have medication on its own you have to do stuff for yourself and I think that's where music has really you know played a huge role in I don't want to say my recovery because it's not like you know I'm recovered or I've anything to recover from but it's helped me to overcome like the main challenges. For my well-being, art has just contributed to everything. Like, I'd be still sitting in my room, not knowing what I'm doing with myself, still falling into my like falling into depressive mindsets if uh, I didn't have art. And it just it keeps me going. Like, it's it's almost like I'm sw spinning in a circle, and the, my arms are being pulled away from the motion of me spinning but I'm staring at the stars and the stars stay in centre and that's what art is almost in my life like no matter how much things start to get pulled away I still have that centre focus which you know in that story is stars but in reality is art. I've always been involved with musicals and you know it's the kind of escapism of it. I know it probably sounds really like, ooh, escapism, but like, it's so nice to be able to just forget about everything that's happening in your life and just get on stage and have to perform. Like when I was 16, it was a really kind of hard time for me, definitely. Um, my dad had a stroke and at the same time, my granddad was dying in hospital and my sister and I were both involved in Les Mis and the Mermaid. And during like this intense week of rehearsals, my granddad died and I had to just keep going with the show and so did my sister and just, you know, power through. And it was really nice to just have, even though it was such a sad show to be doing and like I was dealing with like characters dying and things like that. It was still a nice distraction to pretend to be someone else for a while and not to have to kind of, in a way, kind of deal with what was going on. I could focus on the show and I had that to keep me going. Basically, when I sing, I let out everything. When I'm having a bad day, and I, I just go up into my room, and I blare the speaker, and I sing. And for me, that helps. That helps me heal. It does. When I can't find the words to communicate with people, I sing. Art therapy is a commonly used um, way of getting people to engage their creative sides and bring them out of um, whatever dark tunnel that they happen to find themselves in. And a lot of uh, business people and non-creatives even engage in these practices in brainstorming to get their thoughts flowing, um, to find some new and different ideas that they hadn't come up with before. Like any arts, I feel that they give people um, an expression um, they give them a channel for their emotions. So it helps anyone through their bad days, um, be it cooking or painting or breaking a plate. Um, there's so many different channels that people can call on um, to bring themselves out of uh, that slump or um, low points of their life. What I would tell someone who's struggling right now is to go and ask for help because it can seem like the hardest thing in the world to do. And even when you're, you know, getting the help, it can feel so, so difficult. And you feel like, you know, you're attention seeking or 
people will think you're just being dramatic, but that's not the case. If you're feeling bad, like there's a reason for it. And the only thing that you can do for yourself is get help. Some of the biggest issues, I guess, going on for, for young people at the moment, because of the times we're living in, it's kind of the stress of the COVID times. There's definitely issues around school and study. Sometimes there might be issues going on at home that uh, are impacting young people. And sometimes there's issues at school as well. So it might be relationships with teachers or pressures at school or, you know, not finding school easy. So, um, you know, there's a lot of issues. There might be issues around drug use, alcohol use, addiction, crime. Um, all of which are impacting young people's mental health. I think one of the biggest things as well is young people that attend mental health services find it really hard because, you know, talking to a counsellor or a therapist, sometimes they have no relationship with that person, so they kind of bounce back to people that they have strong relationships with, which is a problem as well. You know, we've seen people, and we've referred people to counselling over the years, and they, you know, oftentimes bounce back because they feel that we're the person that they have the established relationship with, even though we aren't the people that necessarily have um, the necessary skill set to help. I think in itself, it's not um, necessarily gonna, gonna resolve a mental health problem on its own, but I do think that um, the networks and connections that, that art can create is uh, really, really helpful. Um, and also to, like I say, express, um, express maybe unexpressed issues. Uh, and kind of get get thing, bring things bubbling up to the surface, which maybe hadn't uh, hadn't bubbled up to the surface before.